Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Guggenheim. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'd like to share the story of a bridge, the one that saved my life. But first, I'd like to share something with you. Did you know that 50% of people in the United States will face at least one significant negative event in their lifetime? And that was before COVID. I joined that group in March 2013. And as a result, I decided to dedicate my life to promoting the science behind happiness and well-being to as many people as possible. You know, pain can be a catalyst for change. And through our choices, that change can be positive. I experienced that. You see, uh, 10 years ago, my life shattered. My strong, healthy husband, the love of my life, my best friend, caught a cold on a business trip. And uh, he developed pneumonia. He was hospitalized, misdiagnosed. And in a little bit over a week, he was gone. In that one moment, my world collapsed. I remember being in the ICU room, losing him, and feeling like I was falling into this void. The road that I had been on in my life hit a sudden dead end, and a gaping hole appeared in my path. I couldn't see the other side. I didn't know where to go, what to do, or really who I was anymore. Something that no one tells you is that when you lose a loved one, your identity in reference to that person also dies. So in that instance, I went from a wife to a widow. No preparation. When you experience trauma or prolonged high levels of stress, the structure by which you define your life can break down. And you might even question what brings your life meaning. According to Dr. Michael Steger's work out of Colorado State University, meaning has three elements, and coherence is one of them. It's the feeling that life makes sense, that the bits all fit together. And when one critical part disappears, that can be very disorienting and frightening. That's how I felt when my husband died. And at first, I, I didn't really want to live. Um, I didn't want to feel the emotions that that loss would bring. I didn't want to step into that moment. So I thought it would, might be easier just to let go. And then I heard a soft whisper in my head, invariably my mother's voice, questioning me, what about the children? Boy. Okay, so I knew I couldn't fix this. I couldn't kiss it and make it go away like I could so many other times in their lives. But I could make it worse for sure if I wasn't there. That would be crushing to them and I would not add to their pain. So I made a choice to live. And I didn't know how. I didn't know how to eat that elephant. <laughs> I didn't know how to start. Feeling out of control falling, I reached out to get some footing. And I found what mattered to me, my sons. The second element of meaning is significance. I connected with how much I valued my children and the value that I could bring to them during this very difficult time. Significance is about what makes life worth living. It's a feeling that others matter to you and you matter to them. Even though I was heartbroken and afraid, uh, I knew I had to change my thinking. So I decided to build a bridge, a new framework for my life to get me to the other side of pain, to a place of growth and new opportunities. Now, the first step in building this bridge was realizing that I could not control what had happened. 
but I did have a choice in my reaction. That's the gate I had to walk through. I could cry for the rest of my life, and that would not bring Ricardo back. I had to accept that. The next step was choosing a destination. I chose happiness, almost by necessity. I had to find a way to be happy again, to be of service to my children, to serve as a role model. And uh, surviving wouldn't be enough, so I had to shoot for the stars. An important pillar on my bridge was my purpose. That's the third element of meaning. Purpose is the most visible part, is the motivation behind meaning. It's what gets you to act. And you're not going anywhere unless you move. The rest are the stones paving the way on the bridge. And the stones are what you choose to get you across and over the turbulent waters of the challenge. Now, the first in my original purpose, that was motherhood. That was the first pillar I clung to. In my aspirational purpose, well, that was happiness. Now, the definition of happiness is a lot richer than we think. It's not toxic positivity, and it's not pretending to be happy when you're not. That's not healthy, and it will not make you happy. I've learned that happiness is actually a multidimensional concept and involves more than pleasure. It's built on a foundation of meaning and relationships and has important elements like achievement and engagement, mindfulness, physical and mental health, and more. And in order to become happier, we need to invest time in developing those and efforts in developing those. Research by Dr. Sonia Lubomirsky shows that genetics has a big impact on our happiness set level. And life circumstances also play a role. But there's a lot that has to do with personal choice. There's a lot that we can do something about. I live and work in this third. Slowly, through the choices I made and actions I took, I began to be happy again. And I thought that I was unique. Don't we think so sometimes, right? We're unique. It turns out, though, that um, growing from challenges and even trauma is fairly common. Let me be clear. You don't bypass the pain. You transform through the struggle. And after a while, I realized that um, I had experienced positive psychological changes. I took on new opportunities like getting an MBA at Georgetown University and becoming a founder of the World Happiness Summit. Um, I engaged in deeper relationships, and I connected with a greater sense of spirituality in my life. My life began getting more enriched. Uh, and the most amazing thing is that I found out that I was stronger than I thought I was. And I also began to appreciate life more fully. These are the dimensions of post-traumatic growth. I not only survived, I thrived. Now, I will always miss my husband, and sometimes it will hurt, and sometimes it hurts a lot. But I had to let go of the deep pain, because in order for happiness to grow in our lives, we need to make space for it. And holding on to bitterness, it cannot flourish. I also had to forgive the doctors who made the mistakes that ultimately caused his death. And I say I had to because there are certain conditions, and these are the stones along the bridge, that create a higher probability for happiness to take root. And, forg and forgiveness is one of them. These stones must sit on a strong foundation. Relationships are a key part of that. In focusing on my children, I was inadvertently taking a big step towards happiness. Because it turns out that the state of our social connections has the biggest impact on how happy we are. It's intuitive that this is so, and also science backs the claim. 
In fact, professors at Harvard University conducting the longest longitudinal study on what makes people happy, 85 years and going, found that the greatest driver of happiness are positive relationships. And it is because of the significance of those social connections that groups, communities, and even societies can experience growth post-trauma. I shared earlier that I dedicate my life to promoting well-being around the world. And I just got back from Italy, where we were discussing the findings of the latest World Happiness Report. And there was one outcome that struck me. Uh, altruism went up significantly in Ukraine in 2022. How is it that benevolence could increase in a country facing the harsh realities of war? Well, I think that points to collective post-traumatic growth. And why does it happen? It's about people uniting around a common cause. It's about finding meaning in doing things for others. I connect deeply with kindness. It's a special stone on my bridge. And gratitude is one made out of gold. I find that I'm happier when I'm kind, and uh, unhappiness and gratitude tend to cancel each other out. So it's a go-to for me when I'm down. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't have challenging thoughts or emotions. I've just trained myself to let them go and instead invest in the thoughts and behaviors that will nourish the ways of being that I want to become. I understand that the principles behind happiness are simple, yet the implementation and process can be difficult and time-consuming. But it is so worthwhile. Whichever way you build your bridge, I want to leave you with a vision that might spark a choice in you. The bridge to happiness is meaning, cemented by positive relationships with pillars of significance, coherence, and purpose. You open the gate by making a choice, and the rest are the stones that support you on your way. You can choose who you become. Before I went through this trauma, I used to experience life as black or white. Now I see it in technicolor, and I've realized that happiness is a prism through which you choose to experience life. And the bridge to happiness lies in the journey, not the destination. Thank you. <laughs>